In this lesson, we're going to look at repetition or looping in Python. And we're going to look at two types of loops, the while loop and the for loop. And we'll start with the while loop. So I'm going to open a new script. We're going to call it loops.py. The first thing we're going to do is write a simple while loop to print the numbers 1 through 10. So we're going to create a variable number, set it to 1. And we're going to say while number is less than 11. Don't forget the colon to indicate the beginning of the body. Then we're going to print number. And then we're going to increment number by 1 so that A will get all the numbers 1 through 10 and B so that the loop will stop once number reaches 11, which will make our conditional become false. So let's save the file, bring our command window back up, and there's the numbers 1 through 10. Now let's look at a more advanced example, although not that much different than what we've already done. First I'm going to comment out this code. This time we're going to compute the balance on a savings account, assuming that it earns 2% simple interest per year, compounded over however many years it takes to reach 5,000. So we say Y balance is less than 5,000. Balance times equal the rate. Uh, we left out a variable for the years. We need, that's what we're keeping track of, is how many years it's going to take. So we'll say years equals zero. And then increment years by one. And then finally, we'll report to the user how long it takes to reach 5,000. Notice that to embed a number in a string, I have to convert the number to a string using the str function. All right, so let's save this script, bring our window back up, clear the screen, run the script again, and we'll see that it takes 82 years to reach 5,000. So there are two examples of while loops. And again, if you've had some programming experience, you should understand exactly what's going on with this type of loop. So now let's move on to the for loop. First, let me comment out my code. And of course, it'd be nice if I had a fancy editor that would do this for me, but I like to use a low common denominator when demonstrating these programs. So I'm using Notepad, and I have to comment them out myself by hand. The for loop can be used on any sequence of data, like a list, or a range, or a dictionary anything that's stored in a sequence. So let's look at a couple of examples. First of all, we'll look at how to do it with a list. So for example, if we want to print the numbers 1 through 10, just like we did in the while loop, we could say for i n, then we make a list of 10. And this is a little laborious. There's easier ways to do it, but I'm just trying to demonstrate the idea of a list. Bring our command window up. Let's clear the screen, and then run the program and there's 1 through 10. We could also do it on a list of strings. So a very simple list here. Left out my colon right up here. Save the file then run it. We'll leave the other window up. And then finally, an easier way to do the first example of the for loop would be for i in range 111 print i and again I forgot my colon. Try this again. So you see the for loop works by having an internal iterator. Let's look at the names, for example. That this is the first name, this is the second name, this is the third name, this is the last name. It doesn't even have to know the numeric position in the list. It just knows first, next, next, and last. And that's all it needs to know. The actual placement in the list doesn't matter, just like with the numbers. 1 is the first number, 10 is the last number. The iterator knows to go from the first to the last. So that's how for loops work in Python. And rather than bore you with more examples, this will suffice for the types of for loops we'll be doing in this course. So we're ready now to move on to the next lesson where we're going to discuss how to write functions in Python.